So I'm icing my foot right now. So my foot's over here. So it looks awkward that I'm sort of sitting like this. This is why. I have a friend who I met my sophomore year of college and he actually is a doctor now. So I was talking to him. I call him Dr. Alex. And it made me think about all the really fun memories from sophomore year of college. So I met Dr. Alex sophomore year of college, but I'll start with this interesting story. So sophomore year of college, I had a neighbor named Brandon, shout out Brandon. And he really, really inspired me to get in touch with my artistic side. The reason I mention him is, and it fits with the title of this video. Initially, Brandon wasn't liked by the hall. The reason was because one, most of us were first or second years. Brandon was uh, a senior. And the way it worked where I lived on campus, we didn't have kitchens. But Brandon had all these kind of his own little things that he could do. So like he was sort of cooking in his room, right? And it would create smells, which I didn't care. I grew up with a lot of different smells, you know, Chinese cooking. So it would create all these smells and it would anger some of his neighbors. And then the other thing was he would talk really, really, really loudly on the phone at night. And that's actually how I first met him because one day I was trying to sleep and I just heard blah, 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 he was just talking on the phone and then I knocked on his door and I asked him to quiet down and he did quiet down. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then the next day he woke me up at night again because he was just talking on his phone. I had to knock on his door again. A lot of neighbors had interactions like that with him because some people didn't like the smell of some of the stuff he was cooking. A few times some neighbors knocked on his door asking him like, what's wrong with the smell? And to his credit, he tried. He would sometimes put whatever he's trying to cook basically on the ledge so the wind would sort of carry it outwards, right? But still, to no avail. Eventually, I don't remember how Brandon and I started hanging out. It might have been one time, I think we were just walking back together. We just happened to be walking back to our rooms together. We started talking and we realized we really got along. It started there and then Brandon and I became really good friends. The reason I wanted to bring up this story first was Brandon and I started out with interactions that you could called bad interactions, right? I interrupted his engaging conversations, whatever he was doing. I think he had two good friends, basically, that he talked to on the phone a lot. A friend that he grew up with and then his girlfriend, who they were both not going to pen. So he would just talk to them a lot. And so I interrupted twice his good conversations, but he interrupted my sleep, right? And then he also interrupted some of the other hall members with his cooking. So obviously, Brandon and I started out with bad interactions, but we still became good friends. I'll bring it back to Dr. Alex. Dr. Alex and I met really randomly one time in a club, <laughs> randomly. He was a transfer student and I could tell immediately, like this guy was a very gentle dude who was on autopilot. I think it was hard for me to describe that word I got until today. And maybe that's why I wanted to make this video. Dr. Alex was on autopilot as in he grew up with his mom and his whole life was about studying. He planned his whole life for himself, whether with his parents' help or just for himself. He always knew he was on this path. He was going to be an MD, PhD one day. And even in college, he tripled major. Like this dude, his entire life was just like, he was an overachiever and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I'm an overachiever. Just I overachieve in other ways. So after Dr. Alex and I met, we realized we got along next year, junior year, he suddenly on like second day of school, he, he met a girl and she became his girlfriend. He sort of disappeared junior year, it's really funny. Actually, he disappeared senior year too, but I remember senior year, I saw Dr. Alex. At this point, he'd been dating this girl for two years, right? And I was like, I wanna to talk to him. And she just kept walking. And I was like, how rude. She's not letting Dr. Alex and I catch up. So I grabbed Dr. Alex. I'm like, I'm not gonna say his girlfriend's name at the time, now his ex, but I was like, hey, I caught your boyfriend, man. Come save him. He's not leaving until you come back. And she's like, I don't care. You can kidnap him. You can, you can, you do whatever to him. I'm leaving. <laughs> she just keeps walking. I'm like, really? You're gonna leave your 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 boyfriend here? Uh, what if I what if I do something to him? And I, I remember at that point, I was like, I don't know what his deal is in life, but can't he see that? I don't think she she cares about him the same way that he cares about her, right? So you could consider that a bad interaction. It really made me lose a little respect for Dr. Alex. And obviously it's like, we're still really good friends. So it was just like a momentary loss of respect. I'm like, well, you know, he's got his reasons for dating this girl. You can't just judge someone based on one bad interaction slash, you know, one decision. I'm not even gonna say that decision was bad dating or just, this is a decision. Yeah, so Dr. Alex and I have still been friends for all these years. And you know, he's 
helped me a lot through times and I hope I've helped him a lot through times. I don't know. It's just like sometimes you like to think you're a good friend, but you never know if you are, right? Dr. Alex now, I think after all these years, he's gone through a lot, right? And everyone's gone through a lot. And so now he's trying to almost make up for the fact that he was so on autopilot, so I don't even want to call it soft. That's not the right word, but he was so gentle back in the day. So now he's like flipped the other way around. He's trying to be edgy all the time. It's sometimes cringe and sometimes it leads to bad interactions too, but it's not like he's a bad person, right? It's not like he doesn't have your back. So Dr. Alex is a different, but a very similar type of example to Brandon. And this is where it leads to the the next word. And this is such a LA West Coast word, but I'm starting to sort of use it more in my own context, right? So both Brandon and Dr. Alex, the vibes were always good. See, I use that word, vibes, good vibes. This is what this video ultimately is about. How can you judge whether you're gonna groove with someone, whether you're gonna have something beyond just a, hey, how you doing type of acquaintanceship with someone, right? I think this whole concept of vibes and a lot of it, I think, comes with gut feelings. A lot of it comes with gut feelings. You have to trust your gut on these things. It's so weird I'm saying this stuff. Like, as someone that likes to think I'm pretty rational, I've been understanding more of this other side of things and you could credit the acting classes that I took for understanding a lot of this stuff, but there's something to be said about your gut really knows, right? Your gut really knows. We'll go to the next story, which is the perfect counter example to this. So I have a neighbor, he's this old man, probably in his seventies. I try to be a good neighbor, right? I'm friends with almost all my neighbors. And then one day, I just started getting, and I have to be careful with this term, so I'm gonna use what all the other creators use that seem to be okay. I started getting PDF files, vibes from him. Interpret that word, PDF files, and you'll understand what I'm trying to get. The gut was like, dude, don't interact with this person anymore. Do not interact with this person anymore. And I chose to ignore it because again, I'm like, dude, I've had good interactions with him, but something so fundamental, so primal in my brain was like, this guy's giving me PDF file vibes. And what happened was he needed help with something. It was like moving something, right? And I went and I actually brought a friend to help him. And then through that process, I hurt my wrist and it was a really devastating wrist injury. Thank goodness it's healed now. But man, I hurt my wrist and I remember Right after that, I was telling my friend, I'm like, man, I was getting really bad vibes that day. I don't know why. And look at this. It's like the world, the universe telling me I, sh I should stay away from this guy. Because my friend had never met him, right? My friend's like, I didn't get good vibes from him even that first time we interacted with him. I was going to tell you, but you know, you seemed okay with him. This is an example, a, a counter example, I guess, but it supports what I'm saying. Like, good interactions still don't make up for a bad vibe. If you get a bad vibe... It's something, it's something saying something. I don't understand how beyond just your eyes and maybe other senses you pick up and then how your brain interprets, there's other ways that your mind, your different brains in your body can unconsciously, subconsciously tell you stuff, right? And the whole vibe thing, I think that's what it's saying. And so after that incident, you know, this was a reminder for a while, stay away from this guy. You know, one time I remember his windows were all open in his 70s, okay, he was shirtless and he was saying hi to me. I was like, I didn't even say hi to him. I was like, I'm not even gonna. But yeah, it was really, really a wake up call. And I think one time even he, came, he even came up, I live on the third floor, he came up to the third floor, I think to look at me, but I was running out to film an event basically. So I, I text my roommate, I'm like, if the creepy old man knocks on the door, don't let him in, okay? If he's looking for me, don't let him in. And then my roommate's like, oh, right, we didn't get a knock. So he obviously he saw me running out and he just went back to his second floor. That was a pretty crazy story, right? We'll tell a funnier story. So another neighbor, I kind of want to say her name. I don't know, whatever. But yeah, it's a, it's a she. And this is one of those like funny modern stories that I would have told and gotten so many views with back in the day with the channel. This girl moved into the corner. I call it the corner apartment. They were always weird girls. Like they never really interacted with the rest of us because my building where I live, we're all pretty close with each other, but I could deep down tell they really wanted to interact with us. And they were just weird girls. Like, I think it's just, they grew up in the Midwest. They just didn't know how to really interact with city folks. It's one of those. And there's also other things, but at the end of the day, realize they're just weird farm girls. 
this. <laughs> Again, nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm just, this is a funny story. That's why I have to be more funny with this. So this new girl moves into their room and I could tell this is one of those vibes. There is like a flirtatiousness. There's just like weird flirtatiousness. You do what you want to do with that. How I live my life. It's like, okay, um, that's it. It's just a vibe. I want to tell the details, but I'm like, I don't think the details are too relevant because it's more how you analyze the situation after the fact. Long story short, eventually she kind of assaults me. <laughs> I know, it's the weirdest thing. She kind of assaults me, man, but she like really hurts my wrist. And the joke was when I actually hurt my wrist, trying to help that old man, I should have just told her, look at this, look how you hurt my wrist, just to mess with her. But anyways, so she assaults me and she like, she lays her hands on me and she, like, she also hurts my wrist. That's like a very bad interaction, right? And <laughs> You can tell she felt bad about it and she like runs after me and she's trying to make up for it, but it doesn't matter. You ruined, you ruined the situation, whatever you're trying to do. I have another neighbor. I'm going to call him Dilly the Dilly Pickle. Dilly the Dilly Pickle. It's like, I don't think it was like a bad vibe. It was just, she just didn't know how to act and she's going to feel bad about it for the rest of her time. And I'm like, no, I don't think she's that type of girl. She looks too privileged to like feel bad about any consequences. My friend Jordan, shout out Jordan, who's been on this channel before. Jordan comes over and actually meets her, right? And Jordan's messing with her, flirting with her. I told Jordan about the interaction that ended with me being assaulted. And Jordan's like, oh, I know what happened. She's just one of those girls. If you remember from high school and before when they're like, yeah, when a girl hits you, she likes you. It's like that. She just never outgrew that because she's just out of college. We all know college, school doesn't prepare you for the real world, right? So she's just one of those younger girls who still doesn't really understand how to flirt with guys she, she was totally trying to flirt with you and <laughs> she messed up badly basically again it's not excusable right? if you choose not to excuse it it's fine you're totally justified i tell this story because like that's a perfect example of a bad interaction obviously she's my neighbor i saw her a lot afterwards and i could tell she's still trying to get to know me <laughs> So I have to make sure you guys know this is not to excuse behavior like that. If a girl assaults you when she was trying to flirt with you, perfect right. Not interact with her, maybe even, you know, other things. Okay, I'm not going to say what other things, but like you, you have a perfect right to hold your boundaries. Her bad flirtations caused me to not hang out with her that day, right? I'm probably not going to hang out with her anytime unless, I don't know, like <laughs> there's other things happening. I guess... This is where you bring in this chart. Let's break this down. Good interactions, bad interactions, good vibes, bad vibes, right? So obviously if you have good vibes and it's good interactions, that's awesome. Now, if you have good vibes and sometimes bad interactions, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? You could try to get to the bottom of why you have bad interactions, right? And I encourage communication. This is where communication, something that's been lost for 20 years in our society, this is where this is important. Even more importantly, just keeping boundaries, just keeping yourself safe is, if you have good interactions but bad vibes, stay away. That's one of the biggest lessons. Good interactions but bad vibes, stay away. And of course, I think by the time we're in elementary school, we know bad vibes, bad interactions, stay away, obviously, right? But this video is not about this. This video is about this category and this category. So yeah. That's my little reflection. You guys let me know. Have you thought about it this way? You know, bad vibes, bad interactions, good vibes, good interactions, etc., etc. Have you had stories like this? And <laughs> maybe this would be funny. That girl, the girl, maybe I should bring her on this channel. We'll talk about that incident. What do you guys think? <laughs> Better way for society for this channel. I should bring on Dr. Alex, who I've been wanting to bring on. And maybe Brandon can come on too, right? My my two friends that I made sophomore year of college. So yeah, maybe Dilly the Dilly Pickle. I don't think he's been on this channel yet, but I'll bring him on too. He's got a very interesting story slash, you know, he's got his issues, but he's a well-intentioned dude. And I think this was good. I can switch the ice now, ice position on my foot, but hope you guys enjoyed this again. Sometimes it's a blessing you get injured, right? You can let your brain do some work. Leave your comments, man. Let me know what you think. <laughs> The more I think about it, that girl from the last story, she needs to come on this channel. What do you think, guys?